Hello pool players, Ron here. Welcome once again to the Pool Student Channel. Thank you very much for watching everyone. What I've got here is a shot that I recently published in a YouTube short video where I've got the cue ball and the eight ball frozen together but they're not lined up with this corner pocket. In fact, they're lined up over here to hit this point. Just short of it actually. But with th a cut and deuce throw, I make the shot. And I'll make it right now just to kind of show you. If I hit across this eight at just a normal speed, I throw that eight ball right in, even though it's aimed way over here. <clears throat> now, I'm not gonna cover the legality of this shot because I do know that over in the UK, it's not legal, okay? As long as we can hit across it here in the United States, I haven't seen anybody call anybody out over it, and I've seen this shot before. So correct me if I'm wrong, let me know what you know about the, the rules, okay? Uh, I'd be interested to know if there's some sanctioned bodies over here that don't allow this, uh, but I think they all do. So forget about that part. Let's talk about what's happening here with the physics of this shot. Now we know that that just went in, but let's say we have a shot where the cue ball is not frozen to this ball, but back. Let's bring it back even to here. If I shoot, this seven ball directly in this corner pocket, it should actually get over or go in maybe to this side or maybe not go in at all. Let's try it. I'm gonna aim right at the center of the pocket. And I'm gonna hit center cue ball at pocket speed and let's see what happens. Well, I aimed it right in the center and it went in the center. I will say this. If the balls are dirty, and these are very clean, okay, I polish these and about once every week. So these are really clean. In fact, I have a set that I'm working on getting right now that are very, they look sandblasted. They're so dull. And it's going to be amazing the difference between what, what I'm showing you here today from one set of balls to the other. The dirtier they are, the more throw is going to be applied. So let's shoot this shot again. Look at it, I might have overcut it and made it. That's probably what happened there, because that's what you need to do. Now I'm aiming right at the center. That's it right there. So I hit it at a little slower speed too, and that throws it more. Notice how it hit to this side of the pocket. Knowing this, we have to overcut a center ball strike on a cue ball when we have that kind of a cut angle, okay? I want to make sure that I don't overwhelm the player that's just learning this. So I'm not going to go into all of the in-depth physics of this shot. If you want to see that though, you can go to Dr. Dave on his channel and he has a cut induced throw, spin induced throw, a, a tutorial that's just incredible. He really goes into depth with it and um, takes you deep down the rabbit hole, but it's all good stuff to know. But I'm going to try to keep it real simple for the, just because I get overwhelmed and I'm sure you will as, as well as you watch his, when you watch his. Um, but it's good stuff. I'm not uh, criticizing his channel at all. He does a great job. I love it. I watch a lot of his stuff. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and shoot this now with not center ball. I'm going to shoot with inside spin. So I'm going to shoot it with left English. Left spin is known as inside spin because the cut angle into this pocket, this is the inside of the cut angle, this is the outside of the cut angle. So I'm hitting it on the left, which is inside spin. Think of it this way. If I hit inside spin, I'm putting clockwise revolution on this cue ball. And as this clockwise revolution hits this seven ball, think of it as gears, two gears coming together. If it's spinning into it, it's going to grab that, okay? And if it grabs that, it's going to want to push it this way. In other words, instead of into the pocket, it wants to go this direction. So what do you got to do? You've got to overcut it once again. Remember, we overcut it with a center ball because of, um, because of cut-induced throw, but now we're spinning it, so it's called spin-induced throw, and we're hitting it on the inside, which puts a a reverse spin into the object ball. Hence, we have to overcut. If we don't overcut, 
we will miss the shot. Let me see what happens if I hit this nice and easy. It went in, but it went in on this side of the pocket. If that was a dirty set of balls right there, that would have never gone in. Can't wait to get a dirty set and show you the difference. It's gonna be amazing to you guys. So, I just proved the point though. Had I have overcut it a little bit, it would have been like maybe at this side, it would have been right in the middle. I actually aimed it at the middle and it hit on this side, okay? So now, that's inside spin. Once again, I don't wanna to get too overwhelming here. Let's keep it real simple. Now let's cover outside spin. Now outside spin is a totally different animal in my opinion. The reason for that, in fact, let me grab one of these balls. The reason for this is because this is an elephant ball. And I'm gonna put the stripe right down the line. This is really fascinating to me. Let's try to get it real nice and straight here. It looks pretty, pretty good right there. It's a little bit off. So the, what's happening here when I hit in uh, outside spin is I'm gonna put pure roll. Once again, outside spin now in this case is right spin. So as the ball then comes in counterclockwise, it's kind of like thinking of it this way. It's climbing around this ball and it's negating any collision, in, or I should say cut-induced throw, or inside spin throw. It's negating that, and it's actually helping this ball go in. So if I hit this with right spin, I have to, if I aim it directly at the hole, it'll overcut, because it's actually pure rolling there, and it's throwing it, overthrowing it into that cut line. It's the best way I can explain it. So what I do when I shoot these shots, I aim to this side of the pocket. Now, sometimes I aim away from the pocket even more, depending on how much spin and speed I put together. This is why the game's so tough, you guys. Understanding speed and spin and how to hit these shots, how to aim these shots, is what makes this, the game so, so difficult. Even pros will miss shots because they misjudge the throw. They're putting spin on the ball to gain position to another ball. And sometimes they miscalculate. So on an outside spin shot, I want to aim it short of the pocket, undercut it, okay? And that shot looks like this. Now watch the stripe on that ball. That wobbled a little bit. And it actually went to this side of the pocket, which I didn't hit it very good, so sometimes when I talk and try to explain stuff at the same time, this is a different video than I normally make, so bear with me. That looks pretty good there. I'll even bring it over here just a little bit more, have a little more angle on it. Now let's see what happens. I'll bring it instead of top, I'm going to put a little bit more side spin on it instead. Still undercut it a little bit, but I'm aiming to undercut it, okay? I want to stress that because this is outside spin. Outside spin, we aim to undercut. Inside spin, we aim to overcut. Center ball, we aim to overcut too. Once again, let's bring this back here a little bit. Hit it with a little bit more pace. See the spin I'm putting on that cue ball? In fact, I will make these shots like one right after another with outside spin. Inside spin, I will miss them on occasion. Big difference. Big, big difference. Outside spin helps us make the shot. Inside spin makes it more difficult to make the shot. But we still have to compensate for both inside and outside. Okay. Once again, if you're following me, if you're using inside spin, you've got aimed overcut. If you're using outside spin, you aim to undercut, okay? Trying to keep this video real simple, real, real simple. Ideally, all of our shots are gonna be center ball hits, but that is not the case in a lot of uh, situations. Sometimes we have to add these spins in order to gain the position to the next shot, and we have to know how the ball, the object ball, is going to react 
so that we can compensate for that and gain that position and make the shot at the same time. I hope I didn't overwhelm you. If you want to you know, learn more about this and get deeper into it, go to Dr. Dave's uh, channel and watch the uh, cut induced throw and a spin induced throw video. He's got two parts there, a tutorial. Uh, it's going to be overwhelming to some people, but there's great valuable information that he provides there. Love his channel, um, does a great job. I try to keep things simple so that you guys can maybe not be overwhelmed because I sure get overwhelmed when I watch some of that, uh, but it's good stuff, okay? We do need to know the intricacies of these shots. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I answer everyone. Thanks for watching, and like I always say, keep on practicing.